Welcome to Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 4, Thoughts. This episode is called The Foundling. So spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this episode. And yeah, cool to see the, the Mandalorians training on the beach. And I like the thing about how Grogu sitting there with the, the rocks. And then it's revealed that basically all of the, the rocks are crabs that look like rocks. You know, it's a it's a clever kind of evolutionary, like, you know, there's probably a lot of animals that don't realize, oh, that's a crab, maybe I'll eat it, because the, the top of them look like rocks, so, and, and that was basically what they were doing, you know, they weren't quite sure if Grogu is gonna put them in th his mouth, which we, we know he'll put, he'll put stuff in his mouth that maybe he shouldn't, like, sentient yeah let's see and yeah it was fun to see Grogu train with Ragnar and this thing of you know at, at first they're like he's too he's too tiny you know how can how can you train some you know and he does the the leaping around thing which we know is you know that's that's one of the, the ways that Yoda makes up for his for the size discrepancy so that we do not judge him by his size and yeah i i cuz cuz you know it's all you know it's not like cheating it's just a tactic you know and because you know basically ragnar underestimated him and because of that lost against grogu and that's you know it's not like the mandalorians are like you know they they yeah they use hidden stuff all the time that's one of the the yeah the the whole utility belt thing is a big part of their how how well they do and yeah so the dragon kidnaps ragnar and they can't follow it with the what fuel they have in the in the um jetpacks but Bo-Katan immediately gets into the, the, uh, uh, what's it called? The, the vessel she has, and comes back and explain. you know, she's got a, a plan, and, you know, you could see how this could be something that she could really, um, what's it called? Like, um, she, you know, she could build off this to try to become the leader you know like you you could see how like if there's gonna be like a big speech or a big debate or something she could point out if not for me Vizsla would not have Ragnar back if, you know so so this whole so so yeah and let's see. Yeah, and and we see the the flashback for the you know yeah Grogu is shown the the forge. I really like how they are like straight up accepting him. You know, okay, you know it takes a little bit of convincing, but he gets to train. He gets to see the forge and is is told all this stuff about it. And we get in Order sixty six flashback. I don't really have anything to say about that. That. Jesse Gender didn't, so I'm. Well, I would have anyway, but there's going to be. I, I put the link to her video in the description box, so make sure you check that out. And yeah, Grogu gets a chest plate, and the yeah, and and we're given an answer to something that we have been wondering. What about eating? They do take the helmet off for eating, but they, you know, they're they're apart for that, which is, you know, that does make sense. They are very lone wolf kind of thing, you know. So, yeah, makes makes a lot of sense. That would be, and you know, Bo Katan, who's like, you know, clearly considering is this, you know, could this be a a new place where I could belong, you know, and she's used to other Mandalorians around her, she's used to taking off the helmet and being able to see someone's face and such. So, you know, her, 
yeah, them all having to eat apart is obviously, you know, that's not exactly her idea of how this this should be. But she does get the honor of sitting by the fire. And we, you know, we it's revealed that, or maybe it was already established, but, but you know, Vizsla says, Ragnar is my son, which, I gotta say, I thought they were all foundlings. I thought the... Not to be crude, but does this mean they have the helmet on during sex? Because, the, the you know, the saying is not... Have you taken off your helmet in front of anyone other than your spouse? It's have you taken off your helmet in front of anyone, period. So, I just, I gotta admit, that's gotta be very awkward. So, so that's, that's an image. Um, or maybe, maybe it's, uh, because they don't, like, foundlings, they don't talk about, like, adopt, adoption, because you're just, if you're a foundling, you're, everyone's kid basically but the maybe they use like in vitro yeah that that yes i'm going to for for my for my mental well-being i'm going to imagine that they use in vitro or something like that rather than helmet sex and yeah, you know the the I see you know there's there's uh, heat you know and of course it's not actually the kid the the it's the it's the three future foundlings instead and you know the bird shows up and it's like we know you got the kid now cough it up and yeah. This episode has really great action, and yeah, they find they, you know they manage to take down the the giant bird creature, and it's swallowed up in something that really reminded me of the bigger fish triple sequence in the Phantom Menace. So yeah, that was a neat little you know I, I feel like that's got to be a, a reference to that, and apparently they don't clap their hands. They clank the wrist armor, which does make a lot of sense. Like, if you've ever tried clapping with gloves on, not, like, you don't get as much, you know, yeah, that, that noise is not gonna, not gonna really carry the way that barehanded clapping, that's B-A-R-E, is going to, and I gotta say, it really reminded me of how, of, of like, the snapping that is, like, beat. I think it started as beat poetry, but I've recently seen people do it in stuff that wasn't at all beat poetry. So yeah, but yeah, it does it does make sense. And yeah, clan, you know, smashing two pieces of metal together is gonna make an, a noise that'll really carry. So so yeah, and it is you know of course the the three chicks are now foundlings because. The mother is dead, you know, this is, they've, they've said that before, if we, if you find someone that is an orphan, you have to take care of them, they, they are your foundling, you know, so the, oh wait, oh, the helmet sex thing, Ragnar was found by Vizsla, I guess, like how Grogu is, okay, phew, that really, yeah, anyway, the... Yeah, and, you know, she gets one Night Owl, one Mythosaur for the, and she says, what would you say if I saw a Mythosaur, or saw one? Well, you know, it is a very, you know, it's it's great that you got that vision. No, no, I mean, in real life, yeah, you know, you you see a lot of stuff when, when you join the Mandalorians. <laughs> it's like, okay, you know what, I think, let's just... Good talk. Yeah, that was that was exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> I guess that just it goes to show how much how confident they are that the myths are, are all gone. That it must have been a, a vision, but yeah, you know, for for sure, like it seems like 
you know, the fact the fact that she told the armor but not Din, she is thinking that maybe she'll try to to get power here and yeah, you know, it it is like like hypothetically, if she just told the Mandalorians, I know where there is a mythosaur and they all go there, that's not necessarily going to get her the power. But if she can arrange, you know, like maybe there is some kind of ritual that requires a living mythosaur, the same way that to redeem yourself you have to go to the living waters, even though they thought that's impossible, you know, so yeah. I, I I feel like, you know, gradually she's working her way towards. And she waited to ask the armorer this until she already had some, like, you know, it's a it's a status boost, you know, to, to be able to say, I you know, I saved one of the, you know, and, and Vizsla is, like, one of the leaders, basically. I guess, I guess it's, it's the armor who has the overall power because she was the one who declared that Din had to redeem himself but Vizsla is also high up so so yeah you know that's and yeah it turns out the episode was directed by Carl Weathers very very cool and yeah he did quite a good job so yeah, uh, overall I preferred last week's episode to this one but I did like this one a lot uh, yeah, yeah. There's still there's not an episode of Mandalorian that I don't love, and the the you know is um yeah it's it's for me tied with Andor as the best live action Disney Plus Star Wars uh, thing or Star Wars yeah yes I already I said Disney Plus not Disney so the the you know I there's there's some great stuff about Obi-Wan Kenobi and the Book of Boba Fett, but for sure, this and Andor are the, the best so far. And yeah, I'm excited to see where the the stuff that was in this go goes next. And yeah, I guess not every single episode can have KDM O'Brien. I... That is something I'm going to have to learn to live with. But, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really psyched to see where that stuff goes. But, yeah, I, I am interested in seeing where, you know, how is... Um, I can't believe I'm playing on name. Bo-Katan. How is Bo-Katan going to take power? Because it certainly seems... I don't think she's a huge fan. I haven't seen that much, you know... I haven't watched all of her Clone Wars episodes yet. I am working my way through them, but I don't really get the sense that she is stoked on the notion of not having power. And we know that she does not approve of the ways of the Watch. So, you know, that could be a rationalization for her. She could tell herself, the reason I'm taking power of the Watch is so that I can make them you know, I can I can influence them in a more positive light kind of thing, you know, so yeah, excited to see where it goes next, and I expect to do at least one more video this week, so hope to see you there, and if not, yeah, in exactly one week, I will do the next episode of The Mandalorian, so yeah. This is the way.